Welcome to Discover Me Podcast, where we bring you amazing people doing remarkable things in a very influential way. I'm Brian. And I'm Lavanna. And today we have with us Chris Thulin, cinematographer. Nailed it. <laughs> Thanks for having Welcome, me. Welcome, Chris. <laughs> Thank you. So, so the first question we, we want to know is like, who is Chris Thulin? Good question. Uh, I think I ask myself that every day, um, or at least I'm discovering who I am every single day. Um, so yeah, I'm a filmmaker. Um, let's see, I'm from Alaska. Um, I was born in San Diego, not by choice, and moved there in 1999 up to Anchorage, Alaska. Um, my mother actually headed up there first with my sister Jennifer. Long story, we won't get into that. Um, and yeah, and now I live in uh, Colorado, um, continue to create um, videos. Um, and for the most part, I work in the sports world. And um, yeah, it's kind of a quick, short summary of who I am. So did you like grow up? Did you take a lot of pictures and stuff growing up or what? So I think my interest started when I was really young. So my mom, coming from the Philippines, coming from poverty, um, she, she always had a video camera. And she, she'd get videos of my three sisters, you know, this is for grandma you know, thank, thank grandma for the dresses. And, and I, I mean, I distinctly remember not being able to touch the camera. I, I just wasn't allowed to. So I think that's where my initial interest with cameras um, began. And then, um, you know, I, I was into the skateboarding, snowboarding scene in like sixth, seventh, eighth grade. And that's where we like started making videos with my buddies, you know, um, and, and, and there's, they're buried in YouTube somewhere before YouTube became this cool thing. And, um, so yeah, we were, we were doing stuff like that. And uh, I had a, a good friend, his name was Matt Barnett, and he had a dad named Ted. And Ted used to take me and do outdoor things in Alaska um, from about sixth grade until senior year of high school. And, you know, he had a fishing boat and he would take us deep sea fishing. And, and Ted was always kind of this cool guy, this, this cool dad. I really got along with him really well. He liked me because I would, uh, you know, volunteer to help after fishing trips to clean the boat or, or I, maybe I was just a respectful kid. I don't know. Um, but so I, so I met Ted and I, I remember one day Ted um, said on the boat, he said, Chris, you like doing video? And I, and I said, well, yeah, yeah, I do. And he goes, well, you know, that's what I do for a living. And I said, no, I didn't know that. <laughs> you know, I had known him for all these years and it was about ninth grade. And he said, well, do you want to make some Christmas money and come help me on some shoots? And I said, well, sure. So, uh, you know, I, I remember the first video shoot I did with him was at a hospital. Um, it was for Alaska Regional back home. We got all scrubbed up and we were doing stuff for, I think it was some type of like uh, open heart surgery proposal that the, that the, um, that the hospital was going through. Um, so I helped him do that. And, you know, he had me do video edits and stuff at his office. And so that's kind of where, I got uh, my start in the video world, multiple aspects. <laughs> I want to go back a little. I'm interested in the transition and the journey from, you said, uh, California to Alaska. Like, mm -hmm. I, why California to Alaska? And how was that transition for you as a kid from the weather in California to Alaska? Okay, um, so I mean, if you guys want to dig into that story, we'll go there. Um, so my father was in the Marine Corps okay. for 20 years. Um, and I, I would say, you know, he deployed a lot. I think like nine and a half years he deployed in his career. So um, he was always gone. And, you know, for like the 90s, like most of those guys that were in at that time, it was, I think we called garrison time, you know, a lot of them didn't see combat or anything. But if you guys have seen Black Hawk Down, um Somalia so my father went over there twice um when they went in and when the UN pulled out um so you know he he got his in the Marine Corps combat action ribbon there and I, I think he kind of you know and he was a drill instructor short way to put it my dad was a little, a little crazy at the time um and he uh he was gonna re-up and my mom was just over it you know she had raised four kids on her own basically my dad's always gone he's on the drill field or he's deployed um and he uh 
I, my mom literally just took two of the kids, like without telling anybody, like up and left. Told, you know, I remember going, well, she left first, and then she, Jennifer and I um, followed behind. But, um, and Jennifer and I were kind of just living in the hood up there in Alaska, which I don't know where you guys are from, but, you know, when you, people, you say hood in Alaska, people kind of laugh. But there are some nasty neighborhoods up there. And um, it was a kind of like a street where prostitutes ran up and down, and Jennifer and I were living there, and my mom worked in the fish canneries. And uh, my dad ended up, you know, she basically gave him an ultimatum, like, stay in, you know, or, 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 and I'm leaving with the kids or, you know, or you can get out and retire, your, your time is up. And I think he got to that point, he was like, okay, my time's up. And I, I think it was a hard time for him, you know, I think, yeah. like, as a kid, you don't understand it, as you get older, you kind of just wish you can, like, hug your dad and, say, hey, I'm here for you. Yeah. But, um, so, yeah, he, he ended up retiring. Um, well, he actually made him a, uh, for, it's like, I don't think his retirement went the way it should have went. Uh, I think he had a lot of stress going on. Um, obviously his family like splitting up his now he's losing his life. Things aren't going good. So he never had a, um, you know, those plaques that they create when you retire has like the ribbons on. So we actually had one made for him. And then I reached out to his old, um, best friend, Frank from the Marine Corps. And he wrote something on there for him. And then we got the dates of his, um, of his service and he actually retired a month before 9-11 which is probably a good thing for us because he would probably been on the, you know he would probably one of the first guys to go in um so yeah that's how we ended up in alaska <laughs> kind of crazy story uh, yeah uh, go ahead no i was going to say um although like all of that was going on and thank you thank your father for his service um all that was going and yours and your mom and your sisters and brothers because we all say that like it's not just the service member serving it, the kids the the spouse who are left behind are serving just as much as the service member um but um without that transition and you getting to Alaska and meeting Mr. Ted to really help shape and mold this, this passion, this love that you have for, I'm not even going to try the word, but um, for your love for photography and videography, like, I hate that happened, but so glad that your passion came out of this. Yeah, I think that, you know, yeah, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in everything happens for a reason. Yeah, I know it's cliche, but, um, and, I, and I'm also a believer that hard times make, you know, I wouldn't call myself hard, but hard times make good, hardworking people, you know, yeah. Yeah. so, and, and you, sometimes you got to go through hell to, you know, see the light, and um, I think that's just kind of what happened to a lot of my, if not every single one of my siblings, you know, yeah. so, especially Jennifer, you guys, you guys know her. Yes. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, you're, you're, you know I skipped over that. I was I was wondering where the videography came from, you know. But I mean, I kind of want to know, like, so what? What's so? What's it like the day the, the daily life of Chris Stewart? Like, what is that like? Um, <laughs> so recently it's just been a bunch of honey honey do things around the house, <laughs> getting the place you know ready, um, learning about babies. But um, you know, typically uh, you know I get up in the morning usually about. 7 seven thirty. I'm not an early riser you know get the coffee brewing um I try to stick to doing something in the morning like yoga um you know lately I haven't been it's just been so hectic been on the road this and that but this is my editing days at home um and then I just pop into this room right here get in the zone and there are a lot of days where I'm just not productive at all you know but what I do is I show up every single day to the editing station and eventually because I I being creative is hard. Like it's tough. Yeah. And, and, and I've worked a lot of labor jobs. You know, I have commercial fish. I've worked com uh, construction. I've worked so many damn random jobs that have led, you know, have taught me work ethic, but I'm not, you know, on the assembly line, you know, it's not kind of just like cookie cutter being creative is tough. And, um, what I do is I, I, I gain inspiration offline. You know, I, I, I read books and they don't even have to be related to filmmaking to gain inspiration or to find that inner, you know, energy to do something or to get it done. Um, but, but yeah, you know, I'd sit there and you, and you edit and that's kind of, and if 
my clientele is so like this is a broad spectrum of clients. So well, um, tell us, tell us about these clients. Like, let's take a step back prior to editing. What are we editing? Um, Cali. So, I mean, I have a lung health foundation that I do work with. I have professional sports teams. I have rodeos, which are actually quite a bit of my clients these days. Um, and, um, you know, I have an engineering company that I do work with. Um, I have, you know, an Airbnb house that I just set up and I actually like set up the whole Airbnb and the website. I do websites too, just because people ask, um, construction company. So it's a fishing company. So it's just like, Whoever is willing to pay the rate, you know, I'm more than happy to put my energy into it and do my best to, to achieve what they're looking for. And I think I've gained the reputation of just being the guy that gets shit done, you know, like I'm, you can rely on me. I'll get it done at a fair price. Um, and yeah, I think that's where I've just gotten to today. A lot of my clientele just comes from word of mouth. So yeah, that's where I'm at. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna, sure, your IG page is like, I see, I see rodeo, I see, I just thought the Suns, what, college teams, Cowboys, I was like, man, he's yep. out here. So what is that like? Do you ever like, um, like for me, like I like to watch sports, so I can't imagine, I feel like if I was recording it, like I would get fired, because I'd be all over here like looking, <laughs> so what is that yeah. like, actually recording like people like that, like athletes and rodeo? So oh, we'll just do like the Dallas Cowboys, for instance. Um, so I, I shot with the Dallas Cowboys for a couple of years um, and it was actually through Ted. So Ted had a big, Mr. Ted, Ted had, yeah, Mr. Ted. And, and so the, the one common thing that Ted and I had, we were diehard Cowboy fans. Like we, and, and we're not like the Cowboy fans that you see at the stadium. Oh, we them boys, you know, they're throwing up the X and stuff. And they don't really like a damn thing about the history of the Dallas Cowboys. So um, I actually find those people kind of annoying, but um, so Ted and I were diehard Cowboy fans. I even went down there from Alaska once to go to see a game with him. Um, Jennifer actually helped pay for that. I was like 16. Um, so like shooting games, like, so if I'm shooting the action, you know, there are moments where you look up from, you know, your, your viewfinder and you go, you look at someone and go, what, you know, or you look up the scoreboard and what's the score, what's happening? Because you're so dialed in on like staying focused, pulling the shot, following the ball, um so that was kind of working with the cowboys now i also did the mic'd up stuff there where it's like you don't ever want to do the mic'd up stuff man and and i and i played college football so like and i had guys that i ran across that were in the nfl that i played with you know um yeah yeah so doing the mic'd up stuff is like the worst job in the world man like you're just bothering these guys who have one thing on their mind and that's winning the football game and you're being told to put a camera in their face and I actually had a guy who was working with me. I probably, I'll just share it. Screw it. He was doing the mic'd up and he's like sitting there watching the game. And like I said, you don't watch the game. Hits one of the players in the head, you know, and the guy turns around, looks at me because I'm the guy with the camera. Get that shit out of my, it's just not fun. Especially when you're a Cowboys fan, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Wow. Wait, okay. I'm sorry. So a boy from... California or by way of Alaska how okay yeah okay there we go Alaska by way of California how are we a Cowboys fan um so my dad was just a diehard Cowboys fan in the 90s when they were good right and I'm sure he probably just bandwagon hopped on over the Cowboys I don't know I don't get into (laughs) much detail but I grew up in the Tony Romo era and I just remember, like, I distinctly remember, like, arguing with my dad, like, why did you make me a Cowboy fan? You know, this sucks. The Cowboys suck. <laughs> and it was just like, you know, it's like a passion that you just want to get rid of. And my mom was a 49er fan, so she had a crush on Steve Young back in the 90s. And okay, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, why didn't you, be, why couldn't I be a Niner fan, you know? But yeah, so that's kind of how I ended up a Cowboy fan. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get us this derailed like there. People who are Alabama fans. Oh my gosh. Not from and it's not the same. Right. And you don't have a team up in, in Alaska. You know, everyone's kind of a Seahawks fan. When I was a kid, Seahawks sucked. That's what I was going to say. Like, yeah, wouldn't that be the closest team to you? Just, yeah. Like, yeah. Like Russell Wilson, they became good. At it. For Russell Wilson, they weren't really, they weren't popular. Yeah, I like the Seahawks. You know, they got the New Jerseys. Once yeah. they went through the whole change, Marshawn was there. It was awesome. So, yeah. Okay. You know, I, I kind of asked, like, what it was like capturing that footage of professional athletes, but, but like, is that like your, 
Because, like you said, you got a wide, uh, like you got professional athletes and you got rodeos. Like, is it, how do you map that out? Like, it's like, they, do they come at different times? Of year? I know nothing about rodeo. I know when the NFL and NBA come. Like, how does that work out? Do you travel a lot? So, I'm, yeah, I travel a lot, a lot. Um, and rodeo is something that I've been learning too. And I actually really like it. Like, you go to a rodeo event and it's like, it's, you don't get the prima donna, you know, stuff. It's probably because they're not making the big bucks. Um, but, and, it, and it's fun. I mean, it's like a patriotic event. You know, it's, um, it's scary as hell, man. I mean, I, I tell you what, being on the sideline of, of football games, I remember coming from a college background and thinking, you know, dreaming that I was going to make the NFL all, all five foot nine and a half of me. Um, <laughs> yeah, dreaming. And I remember Zeke being a rookie, hitting the sideline, and trucking this guy like for me to the camera right now and looking up and just going I wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy you know like that was that was scary um and then I get in so from doing that to getting into the to the bull riding like I get in there with the bulls oh, like wow. dude, okay dude it, it's a whole different animal and pull people used to say how do you pull focus at which I might be speaking out of the terminology that you guys know, but it's 2.8. So basically wide open, um, narrow depth of field. And how do you pull focus at 2.8? I just go, oh, you know, I just got gotten good at it, of guys running. But when you start getting those horses running, it's just a completely different ball game. So I shoot it in super slow-mo so that, you know, I get, so my shitty shooting doesn't show, right? So I get that shot and it's slowed down quite a bit. So I get it. Um, but yeah, it's, there's, there's a good video of, uh, Chad Johnson, Ocho Cinco, getting on a bull at a PBR and him giving the getting off and just being like, these guys should be paid way more than they do. <laughs> it's intense, man. I, I wouldn't do it. I was so. in rodeos, but I'm from Arkansas, so I, I saw a few rodeos growing up. And you're like, it's scary. You sang at a rodeo? Yeah, no, I've just seen them, like from the stands. Oh, 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 okay. No, I wouldn't dare get down there where you get. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh... It's a sponsored by Huggies event when I'm in there, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> so do you enjoy um, the photography side more than the video side, um, or vice versa? Vice versa, yes. Yeah. So I prefer okay. video. Okay. Um, I, and I told people I get asked to do photos. All. I'm not a photographer, you know. And I, I've got great photographers that I can refer you to um but yeah I'm just not a photographer I, okay. I know how to work a camera obviously and I understand all the settings but I, it's not what I invest my time in. okay the camera is so hard I bought a camera so I bought my first camera when I was uh same time I met Jen okay and I got it she was telling me about the settings and I would take pictures and post them on IG and she's like wait no try this I was it f put f to like 1.8 or 2. Point, like this <laughs> yeah 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 let me tell you, I, I so I, I got a camera. It was like a D thirty four hundred. Okay. And it was like an int entry level, right? And then I was like, okay, cool. Now I'm ready for this uh, D seventy five hundred. I cannot work that thing. Nikon. I, I did what I'm doing with this D seventy five hundred. So when we when we take pictures, my wife's like, once you get your new camera, I'm like, no, I'm gonna go back to the thirty four hundred. It's, it's way yeah, better. yeah. <laughs> oh, trust me, I've been there where it's just completely uh, foreign language, right? But <laughs> it's like anything. You learn it. Is more you do it. So I, I definitely got look, a lot of respect for like a videographer because I can't even shoot a, I'll go to the iPhone. I'm like, man, this is totally disrespectful to my camera right now, but the iPhone is much easier to use. <laughs> man, I've seen, I've, I've seen amazing stuff shot on the iPhone though, so. Okay, so tell me, um, like, what is it like to capture um, those professional athletes in like their probably most, um uh rewarding moment for themselves like how is it for you as the videographer I, I i always think it's really cool to capture history right and and i also think that's what um draws me to rodeo so much is because the nfl has and the nba you know, they all have cameras all over the place mm -hmm. you know so much so that they're kind of like you're um automatically perceived as media you know you're you're with the press and i'm never with the press i'm always like with internal um you know i'm, I'm there to make you look good right and capture those those epic moments of your career you know of the, the whole giant spectrum of what the sports world is but um 
yeah, it's, I think it's great. And, and um, that's what's so awesome about shooting the rodeo because they don't have that exposure yet. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it, 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 it's a lot of fun. Okay. Oh, are, you, are you gonna, so you're saying you're gonna actually get on a bull one day? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> like, where'd this come from? <laughs> I mean, at some point, you know, so much you gotta try it. Yeah, true. true. Yeah, it, I think maybe if I had a kid on the way, you know, I'd, I'd get on one of these like high school, I, I, might, I might be discrediting high school rodeos. Like I said, I'm learning a lot about it. One of these, like, uh, I don't know what they're called, ranch bulls or something. It's a really low, you know, ones that don't buck much, you're real calm. <laughs> They won't come chasing after you once they once you're off. So <laughs> low threat, low threat. Yeah. Um, so one thing, so at, at this point of the show, like we like to do this thing called quick six. And we're we ask you six questions and you answer with the uh the first thing that, that comes to mind. Okay. <laughs> Hunting or fishing. Ooh. Uh I'm gonna say fishing, but I've been getting into hunting a lot more, especially elk hunting. I would completely blow that bugle right now for you and just piss off my old lady in the other room, but I won't do it. Yeah, please but, don't uh, do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> blow everyone's microphone. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, right now, I'd say even. I like them both. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, hot or cold? Ooh. Are we talking about living cold. or? Living. Living, yeah. Living. living? Oh, okay uh neither warm in between you know the 60 to 72 degree range is good for me okay (laughs) so where is this for you like where would this where's this magical place for you um alaska in the summer i mean there's no place i'd rather be than alaska in in july so yeah, I don't do well in the hot, man. I've been doing all this work around the house. I get irritated and frustrated and angry for no reason. And I'm sweating all over the place. I melt. So <laughs> so where is winter? Where's your winter home? Colorado. I mean, by... Uh, but it's by not warm of... in the winter. So where would your warm place be? Yeah, if, if you can have it your way, where would your warm place be? I don't want to be cliche and say like Arizona, but we've got some friends and family down in Arizona that we go and okay. see now and it's kind of nice. So, yeah. okay. Right. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I, Colorado does not equal warm in the winter. Colorado is on my list of places to live, but not her. It's, it's <laughs> great. It's just super, it's really expensive. Like I, I'm here because of a relationship, you know, that's the only reason I'm stuck here. Well, then so. you better stay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay um uh nikon or canon um i like canon they, they, they create a nice picture i like canon all right fast food or home cooked meal Ooh, home cooked meal yeah yeah that's an easy one and I'll, and panasonic by the way over over any of the other ones i, I, I said he's gonna say something that's neither <laughs> of them. i like panasonic i always had since i was a kid is that what you shoot oh, with normally? It, yeah, this is what I shoot. I, I, I'm waiting for them to either come out with something new or I'm going to have to switch over to like one of those reds or something. Um, okay. But yeah. Okay, so we'll add that to the, the question. No, it's just not like most people think it's either Nikon or Canon. And then every once in a while you see someone that's like, no, nah, this one performs better. Well, so that's, that's, a, that's a photo question, Nikon or Canon. So, okay okay right. teach us um dog or cat dog you guys have cats no no, no i don't trust but, them. but wild, we man. know that there are some cat lovers in this world um okay. so don't want to subtract away from the cat lovers cat? you know what what's that <laughs> I was going to say more power to them. You know, if you like living with wild animals, that'll kill you in the middle of the night. Oh my with a the cat. They're the tough people. Yeah, all bull riders are cats. I'm pretty sure like cats. So, Okay, so we take that as dog. Yeah, I like dogs. Okay. <laughs> all right, Crocs or sneakers? Talking shoes here. Oh, sneakers. You're not a Crocs? You don't wear Crocs? No, I, I have many friends who were croc people, and uh, they're just weird. You know, there's something to them. They smell the people, like not the shoes. 
Are you wearing just, Crocs right now? No, no, no I, I, don't. I don't wear Crocs. I don't. But our kids <laughs> like them. So then, then they're like, one kid's like, oh, I forgot to take my tennis shoes to PE, but then I put my Crocs in sport mode. I was like, what is sport mode? <laughs> What's going on? Put the little thing on the back, I guess. So, yeah, you put you put the strap on. You know what? My buddy who has Crocs, he just did that this weekend. He said, "Sport mode initiated," and put a lot of like, "What are you talking about?" Okay, so <laughs> the whole weirdos. Yeah. Oh my god, that was good. All right, so so, what advice would you give someone that's looking to start a career, let's say, as a videographer? Um, I would say grab a camera and get started and, um, just shoot. I mean, you're, you're, and, and obviously study, there are certain things that you should know, like in regard to like composition. Cause I think a lot of what a lot of people will do. And I, and I did it myself is you get a camera, you start shooting, you take that advice and you don't really know what you're looking for, you know, and there are, um, there are things in regards to composition that go as far back as the Renaissance artists and they've already figured it out. So read, um, you're doing yourself an injustice by not reading. And it, it doesn't have to be, you know, strictly about, you know, photography or filmmaking. It can be about work ethic and, um, or, or anything, but, um, yeah, read and study. And I mean, there's so many tutorials online these days. So YouTube. yeah, you, I mean, I mean, that's how, I'm, a, I'm a mechanic pretty much based on YouTube. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like YouTube is like, so we do like, I, like we have like a business and I'm always trying to like record videos, but like YouTube only gets me so far. Because when it started saying like, do this, do this, that, and I'm like, man, what the hell? Like, where's this at? Like, I have no idea what they're talking about. So I need like a yeah. YouTube, like a dummy version. And then I need like the next version. So. Definitely. And that's okay. Whatever works for you, you know? Yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't work. We do like 38 <laughs> takes of each thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> but we get there we, we get, get there, there. Yeah. we get there and I was just gonna add maybe add Mr. Ted in there a good mentor um to to help along with um this uh journey to being a videographer yeah I think that having a mentor is super super important and I I don't know where I'd be without Ted to be honest with you yeah. um probably be you know working some construction job or commercial fishing job back in alaska so yeah without ted i mean okay i think um you're talking about mr ted oh yeah ted yeah he's great i mean i love i love the guy he um i'll probably get him tattooed on somewhere when when he passes hopefully hopefully i die before him but um yeah so ted's awesome he's he's his second dad you know yeah yes i i think it um probably pulls on your passion more than you think um, when you have a good mentor to wrap their arms around you 100 percent. yeah well oh go ahead no, no, I was just going to say thank you. Um, it has been more than a pleasure sitting down talking to you about, uh, help me out with the term. Cinematography. Cinematography. Um, it, it has been amazing. Um, and thank you for sharing your story. I think that's like very important to, um, on relating to where, people come from and seeing where they are today like it shows that journey and what has helped mold them into who they are so thank you for being open and sharing your story absolutely thank you thank yes. you both of you yes so uh, and hopefully um hopefully we get to see some more footage i, I actually look at your ig yes i'm does. always like i'm always <laughs> showing, I'm, i've been showing her stuff forever so to get you on here i was like oh man we got we got Thulin's brother, which is also Thulin. <laughs> <By the way>. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I've been showing photos for a while. So. Yeah, and we love your work. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Don't look at my photos. They're nothing like that. <laughs> I think your photos are great. <laughs> I actually hate, I, I hate my own work. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's really nice to hear it. Yes, well, we are praying for a, a beautiful, healthy baby. Um, and we definitely look forward to everything that you will continue to do. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. So take care, man. You too. Thank you. All right. Let's have a good one. You too.